lifestyle medicine is the use of lifestyle interventions directed at the treatment, management, and prevention of disease. Hey folks, Dr. Keel here, and I want to take a few minutes to talk about protein metabolism and how it works. Uh, this video is designed for people with little to no science background to help them simplify how protein metabolism works in our body. So I'm going to intentionally glaze over some of the more detail-oriented aspects and just focus on the larger picture. First thing is, what are proteins? And proteins in your body do a lot of things, including make your muscles go. They're composed of basic units called amino acids. There are 20 total, and just like the alphabet, if you put those amino acids in different order, you can make different proteins. Uh, there are proteins that are specific to every organ in your body. Uh, protein intake is essential, and there are obviously many dietary sources of it. And you may also hear another term called polypeptide. And that's a, technically it's different, but it's basically a fancy word for a chain of amino acids linked together. And as far as we're concerned, that just means protein. So how does your body metabolize protein? Well, protein metabolism consists of breaking down proteins you ingest, or protein your body doesn't need, into amino acids, and then putting them back together in a different order for new protein. Protein breakdown is called proteolysis and is a catabolic process, and protein synthesis is an anabolic process. In general, the process of skeletal muscle metabolism is moderated by two hormones, insulin and glucagon. Ingested protein is partially broken down and absorbed in the small intestine where it travels to the liver. Here it is used to make many proteins. Skeletal muscle protein synthesis and repair actually occurs locally at the muscle, and that's generally true for the other organ systems as well. Previously, I have created a video that looks uh, at what we know about muscle protein metabolism during exercise, and I would encourage you to check that out for more specific information about what occurs while you're actively exercising. But generally speaking, when you work out or exercise, your muscles are damaged with micro tears. In order to rebuild those, uh, in order to get bigger and stronger, to hypertrophy, your muscles need protein. Uh, they are essential whether you're trying to lose weight, maintain where you are, or gain strength. Any exercise routine is dependent on a good protein intake. And just as a general rule of thumb for working out, eating your body weight in grams of protein per day should provide sufficient protein for muscle growth, and I'll discuss that more at the end. I also quickly want to touch on hypertrophy. Technically, hypertrophy is an increase in volume of organ or cell due to enlargement of cellular components. From a biological and medical point of view, uh, what we're talking about is an increase in the size of individual cells. Hypertrophy can and does occur all over the human body, and certainly not just in the muscles. When most people talk about hypertrophy, though, they are referring to an increase in skeletal muscle mass. This is essentially a summation of cellular hypertrophy over millions of muscle cells. All the cells get bigger, so the muscle physically appears bigger as a result. And if you've heard the term atrophy, this is literally the opposite, where the skeletal muscle fibers actually shrink. And so what happens if you increase your protein intake? In general, there are no negative consequences to eating too much protein. From a fitness, exercise, and weightlifting point of view, you really be challenging yourself to eat too much. Your body is so protein dependent that it can almost always find a place to use it. Uh, and it has a sophisticated mechanism of utilizing it and getting rid of excess in your urine if you need to. The one caveat here is if you do have kidney problems because your body is unable to properly filter out the protein and it can cause your body to start retaining excess fluid. So if you do have problems with your kidneys, uh, please talk to your doctor before you start dramatically increasing your protein intake. Uh, one study did look at uh, amino acid toxicity and it found that people who consume more than 2.2 grams of protein per pound per day are at risk for this. So that's literally more than double your body weight in grams of protein per day. Very difficult to achieve and you really shouldn't have much to worry about there. What happens to protein metabolism if I decrease my total calories or carbohydrate intake? So when you start dieting, either by decreasing calories or carbs or both, in general, your blood sugar is going to go down as a consequence. Your body will try to raise your blood sugar by several mechanisms. One of these is breaking down muscle proteins back into amino acids. These amino acids can then be converted into sugar. Your body specifically targets muscle protein when you're fasting or dieting because compared to most other organs, it is expendable. Would you rather break down protein in your skeletal muscle or in your brain or your heart? Hopefully you said skeletal muscle because that is your body being smart about where it takes protein from. Um, after you have depleted your glycogen stores and have had really no oral intake for 12 to 24 hours, your body shifts from what we would call a fasting to more of a starvation state, and that's where you begin to mobilize more fat. Uh, this process is called ketogenesis, and that's a lecture for another day. So can you prevent your body from breaking down skeletal muscle protein? So how do you prevent or at least minimize that? You basically have to increase your protein intake. This is important to mitigate more damage to skeletal muscle. It provides your body excess amino acids to rebuild the muscle that you may have worked out. It also provides excess amino acids that can be turned into glucose and to help prevent your body from targeting your skeletal muscle. 
That's why most diets include a lot of protein, even for people who aren't approaching it from a fitness perspective. This excess protein will blunt or minimize the effects of protein breakdown while you are dieting. And then just some recommendations. These are taken from an article on examine.com that I found very helpful, and I will put in the comment section. If you're an athlete or highly active person currently attempting to lose body fat while preserving lean muscle mass, a daily intake of 1.5 to 2.2 grams per kilo or 0.68 to 1 grams per pound uh, would be a good target. If you're an athlete or highly active person or you're attempting to lose body fat while preserving lean mass, then a daily intake of 1 to 1.5 grams per kilo or 0.45 to 0.6 grams per pound would be a good target. And if you're more sedentary and not looking to make any changes to your body composition, a target of 0.8 grams per kilo or 0.36 grams per pound and upwards would be a good target. You may also be wondering what percentage of your diet should be protein-based. The 2010 American Dietary Guidelines recommend an adult diet consists of 45 to 65 percent carbs, 10 to 35 percent protein, and 20 to 35 percent fat. That's certainly not etched in stone, and I'm going to suggest that you deviate from that a little bit and don't let your carbs make up more than 40 percent of your total daily calories. And then protein and fat should make up the other 60 to 80 percent. Um, scale your protein intake up based on the recommendations above. And then just briefly, uh, there are a lot of great sources of protein. A quick list includes turkey, chicken breast, fish, cheese, pork, lean beef, and veal, tofu, soy, eggs, yogurt, milk, nuts, and seeds. There's obviously more. And uh, powdered protein is also a great supplemental source. In summary, protein is very important. It is composed of basic building blocks called amino acids. Hypertrophy is an increase in the size of skeletal muscle cells, and this growth is partially dependent on the availability of excess protein and amino acids. It is very difficult to consume toxic levels of protein, so don't worry too much about it. If you decrease your total calories or carbs, your body will be forced to maintain a blood glucose through other means, including breaking down skeletal muscle. You can minimize this breakdown by increasing your total protein intake. And although there are target intakes for an individual depending on your specific goals, approximately one gram per pound of body weight per day is an easy number to remember.